We're ready. Oh, where are we? <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Simon at Savage Reads and today I'm joined by Pip because it is time for... Oh. <laughs> Crime time. Crime time. time. With Pip and Simon. Or with Simon and Pip, as I prefer to say it. Now, we've both got a book we can talk a lot about this time. We couldn't really last time because we didn't really like the book. Um, yeah. But we both do like this book. That's not a spoiler. But there will be spoilers at the end. So what we're going to do is talk about some books that we've both read that are crimey. And then we'll talk about some books we're looking forward to. Announce what we're going to be reading for the next mm -hmm. Crime Time with Pip and Simon. And then we'll talk about the book that we read. Da, 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 <gasps> with spoilers at yeah. the end. All so, the spoilers. yeah, if you've not read it, we'll announce when we... Well, why? you'll know when we're going to... Yeah, firstly, why? <laughs> but we'll talk about that later. Pip. Yes. It's been a while since we've spoken. Well, yes. Well, it's not, not like we, we see each other every, every day because we work together. Not yeah. for much longer. He's going. Just, just come in a minute. He's okay, he's and gone. she's back. She's back. Sorry, Pip. That's what have you right. read since we last did? Well, not everything that you've read, but what yeah. are some of the books, the highs and lows of what you've read crime-wise since we last spoke? Okay. On here. So, the first book I actually started reading after the last Crime Time video, because Simon had mentioned it in the video, and I thought, oh, that sounds quite good. Because it's really nice good. Street. So I thought, right, okay, I'll read that. So the book I'm talking about is Six Stories um, by Jane. No. No, it's by Matt Waslowski, <laughs> but his name isn't on the cover. It's, not, it's I, on the I side. I his name. Matt Waslowski. I'm so sorry. As you all know, I'm not very good at names. Um, <laughs> Who am I? What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd give Six Stories a go. And I just um, basically. I should explain, um, it's basically a podcast in a book. Yeah. So it's a book of the podcast episodes. Yeah. About Which a year, I don't about feel like crime. I totally gripped and got my head around before I started I did reading when I read it. it. So I started reading it and I just realised quite quickly that I just don't think the structure of the book was for me. Why not? Um, I don't know. I think I like a bit of a structure in a book and because I really... This is structure though because each one's an episode. Yeah, but I feel like um, they're much longer than a chapter will be. Oh, they are quite long. Yeah. yeah so when long. I'm reading on the train, I quite like it because I think, right, I can get maybe like three three chapters in or something like that for my short train journey. But I hate stopping in the, in the middle of something. So that's so not I the was book's like, fault, Ugh. that's your commute's fault. Yeah, no, I'm not saying it's... Maybe yeah. take it on holiday. I'm not, I'm definitely not saying, no, it's not for me. I just thought, oh, I'm, I'm not in the right, right frame. I'm not, oh. I'm not. Actually. He's gone. Oh, he's back. It's because this is the sequel, which is Hydra which I will be reading soon, so I'll probably talk about that in the next episode. That one is about a young boy who is killed and then found many years later, and they go back to look at the other people. This is about a woman who massacred a whole family, but why? What I've read that I've not, well, I've not spoken to you about, but no. I've spoken to the lovely people out there oh. about, and that is Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. Now, this is recommended to me by my fellow Costa judge, um, Sophie Rawworth. And she said, Simon, you have to read this book, you'll really, really love it. And she, mm. we've started recommending each other a lot of books since we've finished judging. This is about a young, at the start, this is a brilliant opening line, I think. A bit grim, but brilliant. Lydia is dead, but they don't know this yet. And it starts off in 1970s, where a young girl, Lydia Lee, has gone missing. Um, and you know that she's dead, but her family just thinks she's gone missing. And then it's all about going forwards as to what happens to the family afterwards, but then going back to why she's dead, what might have happened, but then even further back to how her parents met, their childhood, all these things, and how little bits in their lives as they've, as they've gone forward have affected and led up to that moment. Okay. And some of it's about the inheritance of, the weight of inheritance of the hopes from our parents that we get, but also they are an American Chinese family, which in the 70s, there's a lot of racial tension around. So it's really, honestly, it's brilliant, because mm. you've got, why, why is she dead? But at the same time, you've also got this kind of massive sort of drama around the family which is actually kind of it's not high drama it's sort of yeah. melodrama but it's just so so good and i would recommend this to people who think they don't like literary fiction but like thrillers because it has got that pulse of a thriller but it isn't a hundred percent a thriller another book that i've read that i, wanted I to haven't read this yet and i feel really book, bad which simon gave to me i think well we got sent copies from the lovely yep. publishers and i still haven't read it yet but i will i promise well i've read it because i'm good it's basically about a journalist called Tuva Moodison. It's set in Sweden. That's a good name. Tuva Moodison. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right because it's Swedish. But well, is it Tova? T O V A. No, it's T U V A. Well, then it is. Well, I don't know what I'm talking about. Tuva. Am I Swedish? No, I'm not. Tuva. Just in say shut up, Simon. You're not. Yeah. You're not Swedish, savage. Shut up. 
Um, yeah, so it's about Tuva Moodison, who is a journalist working in the local newspaper. Um, it's set in Sweden. And is it set in Sweden, bit? Yeah, it's set in Sweden. I don't know if I've said that. Set in Sweden. <laughs> set in Sweden. And she is investigating a case um, of a string of murders that are happening in the woods by where they live. I like a scary crime. wood. Yeah. I think what I most enjoyed about it was the suspense throughout, as always. I didn't... I don't think I could... I guessed in this one who the twist was going to be about at the end. But well, that's good. If you can't guess out. it, that's yeah. good. That's good. Although I didn't guess it wasn't the biggest shock ever. Because um, that might give it away. I was going to... You know. Enough. Pip enjoyed it. Um, oh, I haven't finished. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say that. One thing I will say is that I do struggle with like Scandi novels. Really? Yeah. And it's really Your mum loves them. My mum absolutely loves them. Because they're always really like dull. But I get that that's what they're meant to be like. But people like that. Do you mean like sort of mono. Because um, when I see Scandi films, do you remember when we saw The Snowman? All yeah. the colours are quite sort of beige. It's yeah, all a bit yeah. beige. And well, this is set in like the depths of winter as well, so it's really um, cold and dark and grim. I quite like the sound of that. But I know that's meant to be set in the scene, but for some reason that makes me feel like a bit like, oh. Well, don't yeah. read any more of those. But anyway, on. overall, yeah, I enjoyed the book. The final book that I want to mention of books that I've read, which some of you might not think is a crime novel in many ways, is Three Things About Elsie. Now, I love Joanna Cannon's books. I've raved about this book already. Mm. I've raved about Trouble with Goats and Sheep. And what I think is brilliant about Joanna Cannon's book is because there's always a mystery, but it just isn't a crime crime. It's just you've got to work it out. So this starts, and it always makes me want to cry because it's very, very sad. It's about a woman called Florence. She's lying on the floor in her sheltered accommodation waiting to see if anybody will remember she's there and find her. And she looks back at to why she's ended up there, but you realise there's something quite dodgy dodgy and dark that's happened. While she's at the home, this man turns up who claims he's one person, but she knows he's someone from her past and has come to get her. But nobody believes her because she also has the beginnings of Alzheimer's. Mm. So it's all about how old people aren't listened to, or just people who aren't listened to, mm. but also it's about people like her friend Elsie, who might do the smallest thing, but it has a butterfly effect and does something massive for somebody else. And honestly, it's such a wonderful book. And um, yeah, Pip says she might read it before. Yeah, I'm doing an event with Joanna on the 15th of March. So if you're in Liverpool, do come and see us talk about this because Anne will be talking about the trouble goats and sheep. But I blinking love this book. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm definitely going to read that one. And also Battenberg on the cover. Yeah, love it. What are you reading right now? So what I'm reading at the moment, I'll have to show you on my brand spanking new Kindle. Pip got this for... Christmas. From... From Andy. Her boyfriend. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, so I thought I'd show you my lovely case as well. So Andy got me this, it's got oh, my initials on, and it's got PJN. a lovely quote. There is um, no friend as loyal as a book, that's true, yeah. even though it's not a book. That's all awkward, because I'm your friend. You are my friend, but books do win. Okay. So the book, oh no, it's locked. Oh no, quick, Pip. Quick, Talk amongst quick, yourselves. Quick, Talk quick. amongst yourselves. I'll hold it close. Oh, it's Harlan Cloban's book. Court. Yes. Is that right? Yes. I so, don't love that sort of book. So, I'm about 80% of the way through at the moment, and it's keeping me gripped in terms of, like, basically I want to know what the ending is and, and who, who done it, but I'm not enjoying the style of writing massively. I have a thing with, and this is going to sound hugely stereotypical, or like, like, I'm, like a sweeping statement, I have a problem with some of the big American crime writers, mm. because I think they write the same thing over and over again, one. Yeah. Two, there's just something about that almost sort of, it's really macho. And there's yeah, something yeah, about that I don't yeah. really like. Yeah, I don't know, there's just something about his writing style. And I think we were chatting about it and you mentioned that you m much prefer female crime writers. And I think maybe that could be what I'm thinking as well. However, having said that, I am looking forward to finding out how the story wraps yeah. up. So, maybe that's one for next I'm time. I'm judging you a little bit. Before we talk about uh, I Let You Go, we're both going to read this which is ICU, because we're big fans of Claire McIntosh, but also she's doing an event in Liverpool that we're going to go to with um, Sarah Vaughan, who wrote Anatomy of a Scandal, which is a crime-based... and Sorry, it's a crime novel that's actually centred around a courtroom drama, and it just says on the front, you want to believe your husband, she wants to destroy him. I mentioned this in my last haul, so I'll link that down below. But yeah, we also want to read that one. And then, da 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 what are we going to be reading next? It's my choice, my turn to choose, and we're going to be reading... <sighs> The Dry by Jane Harper. Now, this book was everywhere last year. So, Pip, you don't know anything about this I book. I literally don't know I anything, do. No? Read the back. Okay, Australia is... Do you know why I just did that? Start from there. 
<laughs> I can read, Saruman. I know. Um, Australia Slowly. is in the... Australia is in the grip of its worst drought in a century and it hasn't rained in the small country town of Kiwara for two years. Tensions in the community become un unbearable when three members of the Hadler family are brutally murdered. Sure. Everyone thinks Luke Hadler, who committed suicide after slaughtering his wife and six-year-old son, is guilty. Do you want me to carry on? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a long one. <laughs> Oof. Policeman Aaron Falk returns to his hometown for the funeral of his childhood best friend and is unwillingly drawn into the investigation. As questions mount and suspicion spreads through the town, Falk is forced to confront the community that rejected him 20 years earlier. Because Falk and Luke Hadler shared a secret, one which Luke's death threatens to unearth. And as Falk probes deeper into the killings, secrets from his past bubble to the surface as he questions the truth of his friend's crime. Dun dun dun! Ooh. So I think it's going to be quite different. Mm -hmm. Loads of people have read this and loved it. I think my mum liked it, but then that worries me because my mum likes Black, Black Susan. She likes Black Eyed Susan. That's what we'll be reading next, so hopefully you'll all join in. Now, the book that we have read is I Let You Go by Claire McIntosh. <laughs> now be warned, there will be spoilers. Hashtag spoiler. <laughs> I don't know. This is about a, well, it's really tricky because you almost have to spoil it from the start. Yeah. When you start reading the book, you witness a accident where a child is hit by a car and dies and the driver drives off. You then go into the narrative of Jenna, who has escaped Bristol where the accident happened, and she has gone to the wilds of Wales to kind of get over what's happened yeah. to her, basically. And initially, this is where the spoilers kind of begin. So... Basically, you read on, and I got really into it because you see it from Jenna's perspective as she's trying to sort of keep hidden but make a new life in a small Welsh yeah. village by the sea. But also, you go through the detective side. Now, I normally find police procedurals really boring. I didn't with this, did no, you? No, I agree, yeah. Sometimes it can be really boring if they go into a lot of detail as well. Well, because it'll be like, they'll be talking they about the surveillance cameras and stuff, and yeah. I was gripped. Yeah. Normally I'd be like, oh, bore off. But I was really, yeah, like, properly gripped. Really and also the dynamic between Thanks. Ray and his sort of subordinate Kate is a little mm. bit saucy. It is. They have a little bit of a kiss because mm. he's got a bit of an issue going on with his marriage and his child. Yeah. So you've got all of this kind of going on as well as Jenna's. And then the big twist comes because what happens, Pip? What happens is you realise that it was in fact Jenna that was the hit and run and killed the child at the start. But was she? And then this is where I think the book gets probably its most powerful and actually its mm. most disturbing because it's about a man who is basically abusing his wife, yeah. who is Jenna, and you start to hear from his side yeah. and it's creepy. It really is. It's and it, the book completely changes in part two, doesn't it, when you start to... Because it's all about how, like, the first time I saw you in a bar and you were beautiful, blah, blah, blah. And then but then it's even it's really the, the first date, isn't it? He says something about, you don't want a pudding, it'll make you fat. Yeah, And it's just these just little things. Drop a little bit in. And then on their wedding night, he basically beats her up. Yeah. Um, and it's how you follow her story. Um, and then it goes twisty, twisty, twisty even more. Yeah, all over so, the place. what shall we say about it, Pip? What did you love so much about it? I loved how many twists and turns there were. It just really kept me on my toes. And I, yeah, I just, I liked that it was in two parts as well because I felt like the first part of the book was like really building up, building up, building up tension. And then the second part of the book was just like twists and turns. Yeah. And I really liked those two like parts of the book. Because you can't quite, it, it's really interesting because as you go on, the, I mean, the thing is, is interesting. So there's one issue that I had with the book, which is only a small quibble, mm -hmm. and Pip's been wanting to know what this is all wow. day. And he wouldn't tell me. And I wouldn't. So and that me. is, so it gets more twisty as it goes towards the end. And then there's one twist that I thought took it too far. Now, I know that's stupid to say about crime novels, because the whole point is they are quite extreme. They're melodramatic. They're high drama, etc. But when you find out that he purposefully tried to run the boy over, because actually the boy Jacob, who died was his son from yeah. an affair with the cleaner at work. Yeah. I was like, hang on. To me, yeah, it's gone one. I didn't think it needed it. And I think her writing's so brilliant that it didn't need that. Now that might have been just the choice of the editor. It might have been her choice to do that anyway. But that was the, and that's the only slight tiny quibble. So do you think that quibble. it should it have just been far. that Ian caused the crash, but not yeah. that? It, well, it was I, his when son. it was, when I sort of almost twigged that he was the one who was driving, I was like, wow, that's a really clever mm. twist. Cause it's almost twisted itself on its head again. But I did think with that little bit, I was like, oh, I don't, not that it broke my sense of disbelief because I was totally there, but I did have a little bit of like, oh, come on. He was really drunk, mm. supposedly. I had to spot it. Anyway, that's I my small, tiny, tiny, tiny quibble because 
I did properly really enjoy it. Yeah, really loved it and love Claire's style of writing as well. I think the big thing about it is it's so disturbing, it so gets to you. So yeah, you is. are, I just felt, I don't know if any of you guys watching Listen to the Arches, Pip, you probably don't listen to the Arches, but when um, there was a storyline about coercive control and this guy who was, this character called Helen, and basically her new husband was telling her how awful she was and how rubbish she was to make her feel weak and then he started to beat her up and because it was in your ears because the archers is on the radio it was so intense this was like that because it is you are because you're forced to be in yeah. it's i saw you i did this so you're therefore yeah. pushed into his position it is horrendous and there's a very awful incident with a cat which i almost Ooh, couldn't forgive is. claire for mm. you probably could because you don't like cats i don't like cats but it was still harrowing i really 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 genuinely couldn't stop reading it. Oh, I think I what's also is you you question Jenna so much as a character. Yeah. You like her, then you hate her. Yeah. Then you start to feel sorry for her, and then you like her again. Yeah, exactly. Your emotions with her are just all over the place. They are. What did you think about, um, there's a love interest. Patrick, yeah. Because yeah. I, I did do, what I like about, what I think Claire was doing with a lot of this book, which I really, really enjoyed, was she was kind of letting... She puts in loads of red herring. So, like, when Jen is running and training to run and she runs in the dark and she knows the footpath, I was like, oh, at some point there's going to be a chase scene on the yeah. cliff. So oh, I was yeah, like, oh, my were, God, there's going to be... Yeah. I think it's really generous when an author does that because they're sort of giving you a hint as to something yeah. so that you feel like, oh, I'm very clever because I've just worked out what might happen later. But also she puts in loads of red herrings because there's loads yeah. of bits where you're like, oh, the car's going to become really important because she's hidden it. But... It isn't really no. important because it's just part of the story. And I just thought all those little bits, I think she's a very generous writer in the fact that she wants you to go along. She's not toying with you. Mm. And she, ne at no point did I feel like I was being um, purposefully having a twist put in just to throw me, just to be twisty. No. I re really enjoyed the relationship between Jenna and Bethan as well. Yes. Who worked in the caravan park. Yeah, so she, really and nice. Bethan's determined to be friends with her regardless. Yeah. But also when all the small villages find out what she's done when she gets arrested they are she's kind of her defense yeah there. she's six up yeah and yeah. she also tries to help her get back on her feet i think she can mm. tell she's quite a lost soul there's also a very cute puppy in it there is. not that that should matter Which but it is it is a big part of the story it is a big part of the story i'm trying to think what else we need to tell people because we've spoiled it for it. most of them now already. well what we'd really love is people's comments down below mm. so that we can comment and chat to you about it did you see the twist coming if you did then you're a genius you are a genius because i definitely yeah, didn't definitely but do you know what didn't. claire one of the joys of twitter of course is that you can sort of tell people that you're doing and claire was really shocked that i hadn't heard about the twist because that is kind of what the book is became particularly mm. famous for yeah. but i hadn't because i'm very good at ignoring people mm. and things when i don't want to know them <gasps> <laughs> it's true, who's this? Um, so, um, yeah, we've gone from one extreme to the other, where it was last time we were like, oh, it's mm, alright, yeah. we can't talk about it tonight. I was like, we just love it! Yeah. And it's um, like really made me excited to read Claire's other book and also a new book that's which I already out, have. Which I've just found out, which I'm not very happy about. Well, sorry, Pip, you don't have one. We recommend this. Yeah. Please, please, 100%. please go and read it. And um, let us know in the comments down below what you thought of it if you've read it. What else? No, well, don't tell us any of the storylines of other books, but what you've thought of her other books. Mm, yeah. And also, do you recommend any of the books we should be reading? Mm. Don't leave any spoilers about The no, Dry, because no we don't want to know until we've finished. But, um, yeah, let us know your thoughts on this. Let us know if we talked about it enough, because I feel like we didn't. We've just gone on about <laughs> how amazing it is. But, um, yeah, it is ace. It really is. And that's it. That's we'll be it. back next month to talk about The Dry, and uh, we'll speak to you all then. Bye. 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 This American... Novel. Novel. <laughs> novel. Novel. It is a novel. I know, but it's funny.